what's up everyone welcome back to asia glow podcast season three oh, yeah. thank you guys for waiting for this podcast and the season of this podcast because it has been a while i've gotten a lot of comments on tiktok recently that were like where why did you stop the podcast why did blah 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 and i just wanted to say i didn't stop the podcast i just need to take a break from it because asia glow podcast wasn't really the best thing for my mental health i'm not gonna lie this thing does take a lot of time for me to do on top of like school and like all the life changes that have been happening recently i graduated college i'm, I'm moving into an apartment like all this crazy adult stuff do, having to do this plus a nine to five job it's, it's just a lot the reason why using a podcast wasn't really like a good thing for me back then was that it was definitely something that wasn't just me. Like people only knew me for Asian Girl Podcast and I wanted to be a content creator so that I could show a lot of parts of myself. And Asian Girl Podcast kind of limited me in doing that. I'm back, hopefully better than ever. Welcome back to Asian Glow season three. I'm excited about announcing this. And um, thank you for being so patient because that is really, uh, that is not something that I am. I am very impatient. I hope you enjoy the first episode of Asian Glow Podcast season three. Ooh. Consensual air kiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good, girl. <laughs> Hello, everyone. What is up, Glow Gangsters? Hello, everyone. It's your host, Clarence Angelo. I miss you guys. I have a homie coming on for season three. Welcome, my motherfucking cousin, my real ass motherfucking cousin, Alcheska. I got you right. Yeah, guys, this is my cousin, Alcheska. I'm trying to think of a little social media name for you, and I'm kind of leaning towards Skyflakes. Because, like, ska at the end of El Chesca, Sky Flakes is, like, a Filipino snack. Hey. Oh, my God. This is kind of cute. Look at the hey, crown on my head. Hey, soft girl. Oh. Hey. hey. I'm your host. You're my hope. <laughs> I'm J-Hope from BTS, but you can call me J. Clarence Angelo. Worldwide. El Chesca, no, no. <laughs> If you know, you know. Oh, well, like kiss, baby. A worldwide kiss. And the way we start these episodes is I go, shall we? And then you're like, we shall. And then we cheers. All right. Because Asian Glow. Asian Glow podcast. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Welcome to Asian Glow podcast. The podcast <laughs> where we talk about all things about being Asian. Wait. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about mother freaking. Mother fucking. K-pop, ah! babes. K-pop. I got Jimin on my cup. I have Jimin on mine. I got Jimin on my cup and Jimin in my heart. All right, anyway, shall we? We, we shall. Mm, mm, I'm not drinking out of this. I haven't washed this in years. Yeah. I got something to start off this freaking season. Okay. So today's episode, uh, based on what we're wearing, we're both wearing Jin stuff, by the way. Jin, interesting, Kim interesting. Sok Jin stuff. Oh, I got it as a gift. <laughs> Mine was off of the black market in the Philippines. I'm not even lying. Like, it actually was out of the depths of the alleys of the Philippines. It doesn't look like it. Well, but well anyways, whatever. <laughs> based on the shirts, we are talking about K-pop today, which is what I'm so freaking excited about. I feel like I've never been able to talk about K-pop on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mostly because, not because I didn't want to, but my friends, like, they weren't, like, um, Kama Sadi say psychotic okay <laughs> we, we already kidding. agree i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> and if you're sad that this episode's about k-pop i'm sorry and i hate disappointing people so don't let me know that you're sad that this episode's about k-pop no if but, if you're not into k-pop then we're here to get you into k-pop yeah we're yeah. here welcome to conversion therapy babe <laughs> so i want to start off so i just got back from Lollapalooza in which J-Hope and K-pop group TXT were performing at it. Obviously, at any festival, if you are standing the artist, you're going to wait all day for that artist. Duh. At any festival. But this festival was a K-pop festival, basically. So Mm -hmm. it was the K-pop fans waiting all day for the artist. So that shit was crazy. People were showing out at 2 a.m. for J-Hope, who performed at 9.15 p.m. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was crazy. Wait, did you wait that long? No. But anyways, (laughs) for TXT, they performed at 7.15 p.m. And I showed up at 12.00. My friends and I, we got divided at mm-hmm. waiting for TXT, right? My friend, very obviously an Asian, like typical Asian hetero dude. Kevin like, Wynn. The audience that was there for TXT, they like very obviously looked different. So my friend was like trying to get in, get back to me, right? Because mm-hmm. he was like, you, dude, like we got separated during the mosh, whatever, uh-huh. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the friends that I made 
in the crowd at TXT. They were like, dude, this trans is going to get through. He keeps saying that he's with you. Like, is this true? And I was like, oh, guys, he's... Not? I was like, he's with me. And they're like, oh, you're capping. Like, he's not with you. Like, no way. We're like, no, no, no. Like, he can get through. She goes, are you playing with me? Like, I go, let him through. He's a friend of mine. I went to college with him. And like, prove it. And I was like, I don't know how to prove it. I like, look at them. I go, he's a Yoongi bias. And then the, the, the scene started. <laughs> Like, I was just, there was just two girls not letting them through. I love these two girls. And then the entire MOA crowd turns to me. A Yoongi bias? <laughs> this is parted, bro. And, then, and he was like, hey, I got through. I got through. He goes, I love Yoongi. Like, <laughs> they were like, you should have started with that. Like, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Damn, they really didn't let him through. <laughs> they were like, are you sure? Like, what? what? Yeah, how, how Like, we haven't me? seen him all day. And I was like, yeah, but it was because we got our shit blended during... <laughs> Of, our shit blended. Yeah, we got our shit blended during a little. We got our shit rearranged. Yeah, there's so many TikToks of like people, even like um, freaking Erica. Yeah, being like Erica the Titus. crowd. The crowd was insane. She was yeah. like, it wasn't cool. It and wasn't obviously, cool. she has to like keep a front because she's on like yeah. TikTok. But yeah, K-pop fans that have never been to a rap concert or an EDM rave before, they were fucked. Yeah, and like yeah. we were all taking care of each other, which was that's good. Honestly, the best. That's good. I feel but, like yeah. if you go to like a festival, like. Lala, that's not solely for K-pop. Yeah. Then you need to like I don't know have like tough skin, like physically yeah. tough skin, because that shit looked crazy. I know. I came out of there battered, beaten, and bruised. Yeah. Do you have any bruises? Um, in my heart, Subin, bro. <laughs> I've K-pop been a fan. stand since I was nine years old. <laughs> I'm. Nine. 21. <laughs> she walked out of the badge and just straight up was like, I love BTS. You've been to the trenches. The literal trenches because, like, K pop wasn't always cool. Nah. It was actually, no, no, like, no. looked down this. upon. And we all know yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, like, now, people are like, what the fuck is K pop? Yeah, yeah. In seventh grade, BTS just debuted. Since K pop wasn't, like, super known, the only way, like, they could communicate with, like, international fans, I'm pretty sure, the most efficient way was through Twitter. I made a Twitter account. How old are you supposed to be to make a Twitter account? Like, 16, 18? I think 16, yeah. I was 12. <laughs> that um, makes so much sense. What? With my personality, it makes it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much sense. You're like, oh, oh, oh that, now I get that it. That explains it. You're like, I get why you are the way that you are. <laughs> um, I jumped on Twitter, I think primarily when BTS did like um, their first America tour. It was called the Red Bullet Tour. Guess how much the, t- the tickets were? Like 20 bucks. No. Obviously, like for VIP, if I wanted to go, it was like 100. Two, 200. You got to meet them. You got to. <laughs> touch them <laughs> nurse <laughs> if you get to touch bts then you get to marry bts you know what oh. i'm saying like <laughs> she's like one plus one is two so therefore um but it was like but- imagine that today oh my god you think ahead of me bitch because someone like obviously when you have a lot of fans you have a lot of haters but someone had like tweeted a picture of a gun and like added like bts like they're at and was oh. like see you in dallas and then dallas of course obviously what is it what big hit like took it as a threat because it literally was and so me being 12 um and being a true crime fan she I bought a gun know. herself <laughs> no. and hunted for the guy <laughs> with the gun and shot him instead <laughs> and that's on bulletproof base <laughs> that's on the opening of ugh <laughs> anyway <laughs> Anyway, like, shut up, you're gonna, uh, no. that's her. <laughs> Here is capes, but they do have. <laughs> wings they were eyeliner. they were twelve years old. <laughs> they do have fishnets and a high top. They covers. were twelve years old and were wearing a shirt that said Jin ninety nine. So yeah, I like went on Twitter to do a little investigating. <laughs> Oh, come on, Sherlock. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I only heard that someone tried to like make a threat at BTS like through one my one of two K-pop friends. My one of two closeted K-pop friends. I didn't know how Twitter actually worked. So um oh my at <laughs> do, was... do, do you wanna guess? <laughs> no. Jane's my... right cheek. Shut the hell up. That's kinda close. My at was K pop. K-pop with three P's at the end, Jin Lover with a U, 2001, the year I was born, and then K-pop. <laughs> Double so, K-pop. So, yeah, in case you didn't know if who I Jin was. I that username, I'd be like, I wonder if this girl likes K-pop. <laughs> Wait, it's giving, if y'all fucking remember season one when I said my first Instagram username was Crazy Hollis so <laughs> Clarence. Uh, she's acting like her Twitter was crazy, but I know this girl was on Wattpad. Oh! <laughs> 
him backstage POV. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's the first night of the Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Since there was so much discourse about BTS going on, the haters came in, and I ended up defending BTS until four in the fucking morning. Twelve year old, so three eleven. L- no, literally. Everything. If you go back to that, I deactivated it, so don't try to find it. Um, <laughs> it was just scrollable messages of me defending bts till i fucking die yeah. i can't believe yours looks like that yours look like that back then right because mine now looks like that now <laughs> <laughs> i dropped it because i was like period. getting death threats yeah period, period. <laughs> 12 years hey. old, and i was like and then a week later i went to a friend's house we were eating fucking like lunch or something and then they all it was me and then three of them sitting across from me and they were like, we need to talk to you about something. Oh no. I was like, what? Eating their, like eating my Taco Bell. Yeah. And they were like, we saw that someone in our contacts named K-pop Jin Lover 2001 K-pop <gasps> got on Twitter. And I go, oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> like, we wanted to know if it was you. <laughs> because the way Twitter works is that you can, I didn't know how it worked because I was 12. You go, you log in, and then they just contact all of your contacts who are also on Twitter. <laughs> and so I was literally there sweating my fucking balls off, eating my Taco Bell. I was like, that's crazy. They pull up the <laughs> Twitter account. And they're like, is this you? And I was is like, this you? And it's literally like, it's literally my fake name, Cheska. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not me. Yeah. And they were like, girl, we know it's you. Damn. And then they so sat they added there. You. No, basically, they, <laughs> they sat really... there until I literally was like, yeah, that's me. And they were like, we okay. can't be friends with you. No, they were literally like, okay. Honestly, K pop isn't even that bad. Why was I on the hey, verge of. Back then? Shut up. Because why was I on the verge of tears? And they <laughs> and they just wanted to see me like Die. see me get to my edge. Yeah. <laughs> to like confess. And they no, were like those friends oh. though, they're everything. Because back then for someone to say K pop isn't that bad, that's revolutionary. Actually, yeah. Although this is like an Asian podcast, I know that everyone's probably not like a K pop stan. Mm-hmm. But like, hey. That's okay. It's not for everyone. There's like music genres. Yeah. You know how people are like, oh, I like every kind of music. I like every kind of music, but there's like some. Yeah. For me, it's like the ones that I personally can't handle are like trap music where it's just talking about how much this guy wants to like, is like, want to smash a girl. Mm-hmm. Not for me. Yeah. Like, I'm not about. Let me eat her booty juices, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> like, babe, Chivalry is dead. <laughs> Yeah, chivalry. I wanna eat her boop until I go cross-eyed. Yeah, yeah. Beow, beow, beow. I'm like, damn. This really music is art. So does anyone it. can make music now? <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I will say, even though K-pop is like getting bigger, I still think it's like pretty like niche. Like it takes a certain brain. Yeah, <laughs> because K-pop is like more of a niche thing. If you find someone that likes it, it's like the bonds like ten times more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, For example, yeah. like, let's say I like Ariana Grande. I fucking love Ariana Grande. If I meet another person that likes Ariana Grande, it's almost like, duh. Oh, it's, it's like, duh. Like, that girl got over a billion streams on Seven yeah. Rings. Like, who doesn't like Ariana Grande? Who doesn't Grande? like Ariana Grande? <laughs> Someone that knows K-pop, there's like this weird mental understanding that you know about them. I think it's like the journey that y'all had to go through to get to like K-pop and it's like, oh, we see each other. Yeah. For example, when you see an idol and like the beauty of an idol is like kind of on a different spectrum, not different level, say, yeah. different, completely different spectrum. Mm-hmm. If you know someone likes K-pop and they're like, well, this idol is beautiful, you know that they've mentally gone through like the here's a European standard, but then there's an Asian standard that's different too. And I see past the normal European standard. So it's like, oh, okay, so you've gone through that mental understanding. You know what I mean? Did that make any sense? No, it definitely... Everyone initially likes Eurocentric features. Yeah. It's just a part of it. That's just the societal norms. But then when you, like, unlearn it, and then you, like, open your mind up to another thing, it's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, pop fans are generally, generally more open-minded. That's yeah. kind of like my, oh, I love the experience in watching them because I also like being around the people who are maybe not crazy, but, like, the people who, like, have the mental understanding to be open-minded. But don't get me wrong, not all K-pop fans are nice people. Oh, yeah. No fucking way. Are you way. kidding me? I say all this positive stuff about K-pop, but the negatives there wanna, are there's a bunch well, just, if you guys go on any k-pop video all the comments are always so positive mm-hmm. right no mm-hmm. matter what group do you think 
that being in a k-pop fandom you can't say anything negative about a song even if it's bad do you think that it's almost impossible for army to say like critiques especially on tiktok there's some army out there that like has tough skin and they'll say their opinion but then there's a bunch of people who will comment like You're defend right. songs till they die or something yeah like that. I, but then at the same time i was like have they ever dropped the ball they, but there are some army that will like because sometimes BTS I'm like, I'm they they're, they're, all their songs are good there's no way that any artist could be all their songs are good yeah but yeah, i think it's yeah. funny it would be like if they drop like a bad song sometimes people will be like that's a bop but if like doja drops a bad song her fans are like doja what the fuck was that yeah <laughs> yeah it is scary to have an opinion in a huge fandom yeah. then i'm too scared to speak girl yeah. <laughs> but, I'm like, mm. but once you find like the other fans that are like just as like i don't know crazy crackhead like yeah a out of touch more. fans <laughs> yeah like those are so fun like Horror army? That's fun. Like, like just feral. Feral army is fun. I think they're fun. Like, they always pop up on my Twitter, and it's always like... You are what you see, babes. <laughs> Nurse. <laughs> she got out again. Okay, another negative. In the early stages of K-pop, <laughs> all of the merch was fucking ugly. Oh my god, it was so yeah, ugly. Yeah, guys. No, because I was walking into school with God7, on my Period. shirt and then in the back it said like bam bam 97 can you believe that shit because we went to a like a predominantly white school you're right so then people were looking yeah. at me like mm -hmm. what's bam bam yeah. yeah is that a cartoon character yeah. and i was like girl yeah. oh my god one time in middle school i had um the big like elephant silicone phone case and it was pink and then my background was bam bam from god seven but it was when he was 15 because that's when he debuted and some white kid took my phone and then made fun of Bama because he was Asian. It's not about what Getting racism hate can 12? do to you. It's about <laughs> the attention that racism gives you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> now we trending. Now Asians are trending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's this, um, we on the come up. Okay, do you like production? What do you mean? Like when like, it comes to entertainment? Are you more of a, I like to see the choreo, I like to see the lights? Or are you more like, I like to see them sit down, sing really good, Oh, okay. I love I production. think production is good. I love production. Because I'm like, oh, they're they're doing their job. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, doing yeah. their job and then some. But like sitting down and like singing, that's like cute. The that's cute too. But yeah. if I had to choose, I would choose production. For example, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, etc. Mm -hmm. All those people in the past were who I was standing. I was Beehive. Mm -hmm. I was part of the Bruno Mars fandom. I think that's why right now, K-pop is so big because what artist is doing production, you know? Yeah. Like Justin Bieber, yes, he does production, but he did production. Like he's kind of like more on his like chill yeah, side of his yeah. career. But to the, the extent that Beyonce was doing it, like exactly. any who, who? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. The production that sorry BTS does is insane. fucking insane. Yeah. Going to Beyonce concert, going mm. to see J Hope Law, that shit be inspiring that ass. Like you, you see someone doing what they're literally born to do on stage yeah and then plus there's production like come on yeah, yeah. i bet like, the j-hope stage was crazy yeah. there was one part in his show you guys probably saw it where he's rapping about himself and uh -huh. like how he like hated himself loved himself mm -hmm. blah blah and the whole time he didn't look at the audience once it was like a visual of his face morphing he was rapping to his own face that's cool that's fucking art like yeah, that's that is. crazy yeah yeah no you know that man I mean? was born to do this shit i always used to think that singers uh, he's singers, hungry cetera, hungry for jail <laughs> yeah i thought of jail when i got hungry <laughs> nurse <laughs> I used to think entertainers just entertain. Like that's yeah. your job. I used to think that I'm, I like I dance, so I was like my soul my soul job is to entertain people. Mm -hmm. But like the next level is like you're an artist. Like I was like Jay yeah. entertained me yeah, and then yeah. like made me think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of K-pop is solely entertainment and production. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna so, name any. Yeah. But there are not gonna name any. Proceed still is. <laughs> I thought this would be on set. I thought this would Bruno Mars. Like if, even if you don't like them, you gotta respect them. You know no, what I mean? yeah, yeah. I think about that with certain content creators too. Like you have the, to respect the work respect that they put their, in. You have to respect their hard work. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Welcome back from the break. Hello. So <laughs> the next part of this podcast is a segment that we like to call Asians, Asians answer. answer. This part of the podcast is where we answer your questions that you send me on Instagram when I post on my stories, or you send it to me on TikTok via the comments. First question: Why do you think boys have a harder time standing K-pop than girls? I think K-pop has always been looked on as like a girl thing yeah and like 
It's like to, to stay in a boy band is so feminine. People will look at these very powerful K-pop male artists and be like, that's gay. Or like, yeah, no, or like, because it's a just, different culture. It is. I think it's just, what is it? Like toxic masculinity. Yeah, I mean, men have less, generally less open minds, TBH in my, in my brain. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Beatles were men, right? Like, yeah. Like all of them. But the way that people would stand the Beatles, the way that men would stand the Beatles is because they were like, oh, they're cool. Yeah, yeah. But they're when cool. you see these like asian men like dancing singing and then doing like these like reality shows where they're like acting a little bit more like um yeah, not yeah. flamboyant but just more like energetic and more expressive yeah yeah definitely more expressive sassy. If because it, it's, it's like sassy to them it's such a societal thing for men to not be expressive like we went to txt mm -hmm. and it was like i didn't even notice till the end but it was like low-key heart crushing just like wow these are all girls here which is great like yeah. i love the girls but like where are the dudes? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, but when you do encounter one, it's like so it's fun. It's so there fun. There was a guy behind us. Yes. He was screaming Yuki Yanjin's name. Are. Oh. When you go into a relationship, do you tell your partner, like, you'll never live up to this person. You'll never live up to this member of BTS. Can I can I tell you something? What's up? I told him that. <laughs> he told your boyfriend that how to go down. He was like, well, it was like often in jokes. <laughs> Y'all just railed, and then at the end, you're like, just a reminder. I think it's so funny because the, how the conversation went is that I don't, I don't even know how it started, but it in was in the middle of sex. Yeah. In the middle of sex, <laughs> it was a reminder <laughs> with the gin. Gin, oh, with gin. <laughs> No, I think the conversation was fucking funny because okay. he obviously knew I was joking. I was like, did you know that like you're like second? And then he was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, no, I think about no. it. You're eighth. And I he was like, why did I go lower? And I was like, no, I think about it. You might be like 30th. And he was like, what the fuck? You're like, you're like, how many members are there in this group again? Okay. All and members of 17. Come on. Come on now. That's why you date someone who also came up saying, because so you're like, oh, we're both settling. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the, on the first day, oh. looking each other up and down. Mm, you'll do. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll that, do my for friends, now. is the negative side of dating a kid. <laughs> We're like, what's the negative side? Look in a mirror. <laughs> it's so funny because One Direction stands are like, you'll get over it. Like, it, uh, I was like, is this a phase? Mm -hmm. I don't think. I don't know if this is a phase. The concept that you have to do like a cleanse. Like a BTS cleanse. It's crazy. That's crazy. There's people it, that are huge on social media that be like, um, guys, I like went to the therapist, got on meds, and realized that my BTS like <laughs> phase is just a phase. Like, get help, everyone. Heart emoji. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, because those little BTS breaks are so counterintuitive. Because you take a little break and then you end your break and then you spend eighty dollars at the local K-pop store. Wait, that's and you're what like, I did. Damn. That's what I fucking did. <laughs> you take Came a break back. and you think you're saving money. You think you're getting paid, but all you're doing is not spending. Yeah, look at me now. That's my toxic trait. If I'm not spending, I think I'm making money. <laughs> That's terrible. I was like, oh, look, I returned my Amazon package. I just got paid $50. <laughs> you spent the 50 and they didn't even give it back to you on your credit card. They gave it to you on a gift card or anything back. <laughs> Call that but passive anyways. income. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. is so stupid. Everyone, give your screen a hug for I'll just come on, my fucking cousin. Da -na -na, da -na -na. Shit, what if y'all like her more than me? If that happens, um, that's great, actually, because that means she can start editing the videos. Oh. Leave hate comments. <laughs> Um, please watch our TV vlog. That shit was chaotic. It was, chaos. It was so. Yeah, it was, it was so fun. I know. More K-pop content coming soon. More non-K-pop content coming soon. Um, we just started off with this as our first episode because it kind of matched with everything that was going on in my life right now. So like, hey. But thank you guys for listening. We're gonna say bye like we normally do in our respective languages. One, two, three. Guess I needed a home.